Good afternoon, darlings of God, my fellow renovators, mind renovators. Um, I just have to tell you before I start, before I officially start, um, that I'm driving down the interstate and there are so many beautiful trees with fall colors that um, it's actually a little difficult for me to concentrate. <laughs> So if at any point in this recording I sound like I am a little um, di dis dis distracted, it'll be because there's some gorgeous tree that's like flaming red or bright yellow that has just um, caught my eye and my heart feels like it's about to burst out of my chest. I, I've been aching, literally aching, to see some fall colors and this... Uh, this drive um, is affording me that opportunity and I'm super excited um, okay so I am not going to do a long teaching today but I just wanted I just wanted to actually kind of give you a re refresher on something that I uh, touched on in a previous re recording um, some of you may have heard it, some of you may not have, uh, but it's one that I feel like you really can't hear too often. Um, and it's, it centers around the story of what we call the story of the, the parable of the prodigal son. In that story, the prodigal son is the one who tends to be the star. Uh, it's the, it's, he's the character that, uh, that is always the focus anytime a minister preaches from that text. It's almost always the prodigal son and, and for very good reason. I mean, it's a beautiful picture of, of the gracious, um, unconditional love and heart of our Father God in the way that the Father in that story relates to to the prodigal son who took his his inheritance early and and went and squandered it and in in a sinful lifestyle and and you know you know the story I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that in great detail um, so you know it, there's good reason to focus on that but at a particular time in my life when finances were very tight um, my husband who's my ex-husband now um, he had um, he was out of work and we were on the verge of losing our house and losing our car and we were behind on literally everything numerous months behind on everything and the creditors were calling incessantly and just they felt like they felt like tormentors uh, more than creditors they felt like tormentors who were assigned to just um, to just beat me down <laughs> you know in my in my marriage um, I was the one who handled the finances and so I, I you know I paid the bills and so I was the one having to deal with with these with these people and and it was difficult to be really upset with them because we owed them the money. We owed them the money, and, and I knew we did, and they were just doing their job. And um, But it was stressful. It was very stressful. And I had, I had been told my whole life, and I had said that I believed my whole life that, you know, the the famous scripture, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I could quote it frontwards and backwards and many other scriptures. And, uh, but the reality of our situation was that we were behind on everything and I wasn't seeing how that truth, that promise was being, uh, fleshed out in, in my life. I, I'm, I'm like, standing I believe at least I think that I do I feel like I have faith but where's the money show me the money <laughs> you know that was that was where I was at just being really honest that's where I was at and and so um, in in that time where every day when I would wake up my mind would be bombarded with thoughts of fear of lack and and when are we going to lose the house and when are we going to lose the car and God when are you going to come through um, and how are you going to come through uh, anytime now would be great 
Um, and then throughout the day, feeling anxious and just feeling like I'm on the verge of being overwhelmed and I don't know how to overcome this. And I don't know how we're going to experience breakthrough. And it was in that time period that the Lord brought me to this the parable of the prodigal son. And he 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 brought me to that story and he highlighted for me not the prodigal but the other brother, the older of the two brothers. And if you go if you go to the story, you know, I don't have I can't do this and read from my Bible and drive at the same time. So if you go later, if you go and read the story, you'll find that um, and I, I can't quote it to you, but you'll find in there that uh, when the prodigal son comes back, when the younger brother comes back home, the father sees him afar off and he runs and he greets him and uh, kisses his neck and he puts a robe on him and gives him the family, gives him a ring with the family signet on it and um, he throws a party, orders the servants to kill the fatted calf that, that this, my son that was, that was dead is, has come back home and um, much celebration. And the elder brother, who did not leave home, um, was very angry. He was very angry and felt like there was a sense of injustice in how the father was embracing so easily, so readily em embracing his younger brother and just restoring him right back to where he was as though he had never done anything wrong as though he had not squandered all, all his money and and been living in sin and uh, like like the father just didn't even see any of that he's like didn't even care and so the older brother um, was feeling like like that's not fair it's not fair and and so he has this exchange with the father with his dad and and he basically voices that to him he said he said I have served you all these years and you never even gave me a baby goat you know the King James says kid which is a baby goat he said you never even gave me a baby goat that I could make merry with my friends and then the father says the father says son you are ever with me and all that I have is yours and so when I read that and the Holy Spirit highlighted that for me, that particular phrase where the father says, says, son, you are ever with me and all that I have is yours. It really, really spoke to me. And what I want, what I want to point out to you that he pointed out to me is the contrast between how the elder brother viewed his relationship with the father and how the father viewed his son you know in 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 the in the words of the elder brother he self identifies as a servant now he's a son he is the father's son but he identifies himself as a servant when he says to his dad i have served you all of these years and he's and, and then he says, and you never even gave me a baby goat that I could make merry with my, f my friends. The, the, the thing that you need to get out of that is that not only was he a son who was self-identifying as a servant, but he, as a servant, with a servant or worker mentality, was operating under the assumption that he had to wait for his father to give him something. That unless he gives it to me, I can't make use of it. Which is very normal for somebody that's working for someone. You know, if you, you know, you would never assume as an em employee, you would never assume that you have free access to what belongs to your boss, right? You would expect that that he has to give it to you he or she would have to give something to you that if it's theirs you don't have access to it unless they give it to you 
and that's how the elder brother was thinking and so he'd been he was waiting for the father for his dad to give him the baby goat so to speak and but the father what in in his statement he contradicts what his son says by calling him son you know the son self identifies as a servant and the father quickly uh, lays that idea to to rest when he says son you are ever with me and all that i have is yours and so he was basically saying to him you're not my servant you don't work for me and what i have belongs to you also you could have you could have made use you could have taken the baby goat you could have even killed the fatted calf any time you wanted to don't you don't have to wait for me to give you something it's already yours and that darlings of god is a is a new covenant gospel truth that is so important for you to understand and and that's the that's the truth that 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 I needed to get in that time period when I was just waiting 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 for the Lord to do something all already would you do something already would you show up would you would you meet my need would you give me the money that we need to pay these bills just sitting around waiting trying to be in faith and just waiting for him to do something and and what i learned what i needed to learn and what you need to learn is that because of your sonship because you aren't in fact a worker in the kingdom you're not a servant in this family you are a son of god and his words to you his words to you to today and every day are exactly the same as the words of the father in that parable to his elder son his oldest son son you are ever with me and all that i have is yours when jesus said on the cross it is finished he really meant that we aren't waiting for god to do something we don't need him to give us something that we that we as though we are lacking in some way the new covenant truth that will make you free that will result in breakthrough in your life is when you begin to understand that you already possess everything that you need in the form of the indwelling Christ that everything the father has is yours that 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 the the treasure room in in heaven that it is always open to you the door to the treasure room is always open to you and you can make a withdrawal any time any time you possess you already possess it sorry i got a call um you already possess everything you need the scripture says that we've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness So if it pertains to life, you already have it. You already have it. And and so you know, that's what I had to start doing. I had to uh, my mind needed to be renovated in that area con- 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 concerning finances. Uh, my mind needed renovating. I I needed to quit thinking in terms of I'm waiting for God to give me something and start recognizing that I already have it what what is his belongs to me and all I have to do is is make use of it I just have to believe that I just need to believe I need my heart to be persuaded that what he has belongs to me and how do we persuade our heart how does the, how does one's heart become persuaded of any per- particular truth by renovating your mind as you as you renovate your thinking as you up uproot and tear down um old ways of thinking ways of thinking that are not in keeping with the gospel 
that are not in keeping with the new covenant finished work of the cross. You tear those down and you replace it with with the truth of the gospel. That's how your heart is going to become per- persuaded. Your heart belief will will change. And when your heart belief changes, the circumstances of your life will follow suit. That's exactly what happened in your life. And that In that situation, um, every time from, from that point forward, every time fear would start talking to me, fear of lack and, and fear of losing my house and fear of losing my car and any type of fear or anxiety um, would start talking to me, I would just talk back. Every time I would see uh, the little bitty number um, in my checking account, I would talk back to those to those numbers and I would say you don't represent everything that belongs to me everything my father has is is mine that's what I have that's what that's what be, belongs to me I have no lack I lack nothing I have access to an unlimited su- su- supply my needs are in fact supplied by his riches in glory and, and I would just say those things over and over. Every time fear would talk to me, I would talk back to it. And I would re- re- remind myself of that promise. And, and it took a little while. And it felt like it had to be my full-time job for a few weeks. But then a moment of breakthrough came when that fear of lack just really left me. It just left me. Like the scripture says of Jesus, when, when, he, when he came out of the wilderness, having been tempted of the devil, and he consistently said no when he was tempted, and he used the word. In one of the accounts of that story, uh, it, says, it says, and the devil left him for a season. And that's what happened to me. That fear of lack left me fear of losing my house and losing my car and and any any feeling of lack left me and I was able to enter into a time of real legitimate rest where I truly believed that what my father has is mine as well and that I don't have any lack that I lack nothing and in very short order what happened was that my circumstances changed. My circumstances began to follow suit. When my heart belief changed, my circumstances changed. And we didn't lose our house and we didn't lose our car and and my ex-husband was able to get his job back and 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 so then we had money coming in and we were able to pay the creditors and and but, but my heart belief, my mind needed renovating first. And then, my heart, and then that resulted in my heart belief changing and me experiencing freedom from fear, fear of lack. And so I just want to encourage you with that truth today that you are not a servant, a servant in this family. You're not a worker. God is not your boss. He is your father. And he says to you today, all that I have. He says, son, everything I have be, belongs to you. You can kill the fatted calf, even if it's just to make merry with your friends. Even if it's just to make merry with your friends. He wants you to love your life. He wants you to enjoy life. And he's okay with you making merry with your friends. Kill the fatted calf. But you might need to renovate your mind first before your heart really believes that. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay? I I really believe that that's for somebody. It's for everybody. But I I feel like there's somebody that's going to listen to this that it's really for you. Like you need this. You need to hear this today. Um, Okay, so I'm going to make some faith statements some mind renovating statements. I'll give pause long enough for you to repeat them after me. And I encourage you to say it out loud. Let your ears hear your mouth speaking in agreement with what God says is true about you. Okay. Papa, I thank you 
that just like in the story of the prodigal son, that your words to me today are, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is yours. I reject lies of lack. I reject the lie that what I see in my hand, what I see in my wallet, what I see in my checking account, what I see in my retirement account, what I see in my investment portfolio does not represent everything that belongs to me. I choose to believe instead that everything that belongs to my Father in heaven, his riches in glory, that I have the title deed. I have the title deed. I am an heir with Jesus, who is my elder brother. He was the firstborn in this family. And I am a joint heir with him as another son in this family. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your great sacrifice. I thank you for doing what was necessary for this family to be possible. Thank you for being willing to become the firstborn, live a life where you condescended to take on human flesh. Thank you for always doing those things that please Papa so that you could be qualified to be the final sacrifice, so that you could die my death, suffer my punishment, so you could, you could bear the wages of my sin, so that I could be brought into the family. I thank you so much. I don't have the words to express my gratitude. I celebrate your sacrifice today. I celebrate my union with you. I am perpetually righteous because of my union with you. I am righteous apart from my works because I have been joined unto you and become one spirit with you. I am who I am in my spirit. I am not what I do. I am not the sum total of all of my mistakes. I am not, I am not what I do. The real me is not who I am on my worst days. The real me is who I am in my spirit. And in my spirit, I look just like you, Jesus. Holy and righteous and sanctified and full of wisdom and power and authority and love and hope and peace and joy. All of your characters Characteristics are now mine. I choose to fixate on that today. I thank you that that new levels of understanding are coming to me. Even now, new levels of understanding are coming to me. That the eyes of my understanding are enlightened. And because I know that what I see in my hand does not represent everything that belongs to me, everything available to me, 
it enables me to give without fear. I can hold to my money loosely and let go of it easily. I can be generous in my giving. You are a generous giver. And your generous heart beats inside of my chest. I reject fear of lack that would suggest to me that I can't afford to be generous. <laughs> what? That is a ridiculous lie and I reject it. Of course I can be generous. I have access to rich to my father's riches and glory. Everything that belongs to him belongs to me. Of course I can be generous. Of course I can give to those that are in need. Of course I can let go of my money without fear. Fear of lack? You don't belong to me. I reject you. And I refuse, I refuse to make decisions based purely upon what I see in the natural. I am a spirit being. I am supernatural. I walk by faith and not by sight. Because that is in keeping with my nature. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good stuff, you guys. It's good stuff. Just makes my makes my well, the well of living water in my innermost being and makes it spring up. <laughs> and then that just bubbles up right out of my mouth as laughter. Okay. I love you guys. We'll do this again tomorrow. Bye.